Hey guys, it's Brett. I've been working in a tissue culture lab for a couple of months now, which hopefully at this point qualifies me to explain exactly what micropropagation is and show you how it works, or at least part of the process. So, what is micropropagation? If you've ever heard of in vitro propagation, just know that it's actually the same thing. So, what is that? The definition of micropropagation, according to dictionary.com, is the process of taking bits of tissue from a plant and using them to create more plants. With micropropagation, we can use parts of a plant as small as a single cell. Although, I don't really know anything about that. Uh, where I work in our lab, we use much larger tissue samples than that. The footage I have is from our tissue culture process. There are other types of micropropagation, but we can always talk about that later. When it comes to my job, most of what I do is tissue culture. Excising the material. I begin by gathering plant material from some of the plants we have sitting around. This is primarily a cannabis facility, but right now we're pending our licensing, so I'm going to practice on some non-cannabis plants. I'm going to use Roma tomatoes and Cherokee purple tomatoes, as well as bell peppers and shishito peppers. To prevent contamination and fungus growth, everything needs to be as clean as possible. I make sure to sanitize my work surface first, but my plant material needs to be clean too. I rinse it all with soapy water bleach and sterile distilled water. Divide, Divide material. material. Usually, Brian, who runs the lab, makes a bunch of growth medium and sterilizes it and has it ready in test tubes. Sometimes I make it as well. Right now, the recipe we're using is based on the famous Marishiga and Skug medium. It's similar to a Japanese dessert in that it's mostly agar gel and sugar, but we also add some chemicals and hormones that are not edible, and those are designed to encourage the plants to put out shoots and leaves. Once our test tubes are ready, we can take the clean plant material and divide it into smaller pieces. We need to make sure that each section we cut has at least one node, which is what we call a joint in the stem. Nodes usually, but not always, have leaves growing out of them, which is typically an easy way to identify them. To prepare our plant material, we start by cutting off all of the leaves. We don't need them, and they're a source of contamination. After that, we cut off anything that looks visibly bleached. That tissue is already dead, and it's just going to rot in the test tube. Once we do that, we just have the good stuff left. We need at least one node per section, but I usually cut our pieces a little bit larger than I technically have to, because once they're divided, I have to pick them up and put them in the test tube, and that is very difficult to do if they're too small. Place into culture. Once my material is divided, I carefully pick up each section and place it into the test tube. It's really important to make sure that each section is right side up. Remember, what we want the plantlets to do is grow shoots and leaves. If we place them upside down, they'll actually start growing roots, which isn't the end of the world, but it isn't super useful either. If that happens, we have to cut off the roots and kind of start over from scratch with that same material. Let it grow. We'll give each plantlet time to grow. Last month, I placed some more tomatoes and other plants into tissue culture, and some of them have gotten pretty big now. Subdivide. Once the plantlets start to look a little too big for their test tubes, we have a few options. We can actually take them back into our sterile workspace and divide them again, or we can go ahead and place them into a different medium that will help them grow roots. We always subdivide our material because it's a great way to create more clones without using up any additional plant material. 
In this footage, I'm subdividing some tomato plants. Because they came out of a clean tube, I don't need to wash this plant material in bleach or rinse with sterile distilled water. We can already assume that it's clean. Subdividing is just doing the same thing that we did before, so cutting off the leaves, dividing it into smaller sections, and placing each one back into tissue culture. Again, as long as you have at least one node in each test tube, you're good. Technically, you can keep doing subdivision indefinitely, although the material can start to lose vigor over a few generations. Now you know what tissue culture micropropagation is. I hope you enjoyed. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions or if there's anything else you want to see.